In this video, we will cover how to import data from multiple files at the same time. So for our West region, we are not getting data in a single file. Instead, all the different states are giving us their own separate files. So we have data for Arizona in this file, California in this file, Colorado in this file, Washington here and other states here. These two are dummy files containing junk data. Since all of these files are CSV files, which is just a special case of text files, we can import data from these one by one using the text input step that we saw last time. So we can put five of these text input steps and input the data from those five files one by one. We can also use the CSV file input step, which we saw in the demonstration video earlier. Basically, this CSV file input step is simpler and easier to set up. Whereas the text input step is more powerful but it takes more time to set up. But if you know how to set up the txt file input step, I would suggest that you should use txt file input step because it is more powerful. In the coming videos, you will notice the power of this step. Now inputting one by one is one of the options, but it is very tedious. For our example, we only have five files, but in your business scenario, you may find hundreds of files dumped together and it would be your job to get data from all these files. In such a situation, PDI offers us a simpler solution. We have to select this text file input step only. Let's double click on it. We'll name this step as input multiple files. Now in file or directory, instead of selecting a single file, we'll go and select the entire directory. Instead of clicking on any single file, I'm just selecting this folder and clicking on OK. Now, if I add this directory to my selected files window, I can see the files in this directory by clicking on show file names. So if I try to import data by setting up the other tabs, the data will be imported from all these files. However, we only want to import data from these first five files. These two are dummy files containing junk values. So to control which files will be used to import the data, we'll use regular expressions. Regular expressions are small expressions using which we tell which type of file name should be included in the list and which type of file name should not be included in the list. For example, if I want to select files which start with the name customer data underscore west so that I do not select the junk files, I will write here customer data underscore west underscore dot plus. This means that any file for which the name starts with customer data underscore west underscore 
all those files will be selected and whichever file does not have this expression in the beginning will not be selected. This plus signifies that any expression can come after this underscore. We'll click on add and now if we click on show file names, you can see that only the file names that we want to input are selected and the two junk files are not selected this time. Now we have to configure the other tabs. The separator is comma. We have a header. The compression is still none. Format is mixed. We are not going to limit. Error handling and filters are not going to be used. We'll click on get fields to get the field names and types. Notice that in the first field name, there is some special character coming. This often happens when you use Microsoft Excel to store a CSV file in the UTF-8 format. So there is no need to panic. Just remove this special characters and, and the name of the field will be corrected. Then we have to rectify the type of these variables. So age we are still having as string and the postal code is also string. Customer ID has a length of 10. This is 50. Then 20. Then 10. Then 25. And 50. 50. 10. And 10. No need to specify the format for string type of variables. Neither is precision required. And now we can preview the rows. And we can see that data is imported from all types of states. We have Arizona also, California also, Colorado. Oregon, Nevada, Washington. And so this basically means that we were able to import data from all the five files which contain data of the West region. You can click on OK now. So this was one way of getting data from multiple files. We added a directory and mentioned the regular expression so that we are able to select the exact files from which we want to import the data. We'll cover the regular expression notation in detail in some other video. For now, I want to show you another way of achieving the same thing. As I mentioned to you earlier that there is the option of accepting file names from previous step also. And there are specialized steps which can get file names. Also, sometimes there are complicated file names such as sometimes we add today's date to a file name. In such situations, we need to create the file name on the go and then use that file name to import the data using the text input step. So in such situations, we use specialized steps to get the file names. If we have some complicated file name, we can add further steps to achieve the exact file name. And then that is inputted to the text input step. Let us see how. So I have dragged and dropped the get file name step. In this, we need to again specify the directory. 
So this is our directory. Let us click on OK. Click on the add button to add this directory to the selected files list. And now click on the preview rules. You can see that there is a variable called file name, which contains the entire address that is the location and the file name also. Now again, you can see that these two dummy files are also coming. So we'll mention the regular expression so that we get only the required files. Now, if we show file names, only these are the five files selected. So this is the step which is outputting the location and name of the file. The name of the variable is file name, which contains this information. Now, if I add a text input step and I connect these two, now let's configure the text file input. And this time I'll tick this checkbox except file names from the previous step. The step is get file names. We are getting this in the drop down because we connected those two steps. Now in this get file name step, the field which contains the information of file location and file name is file name. We have to configure the other tabs like we used to do. Separator is comma, compression none. There is one header row, format mixed. And then in the fields. Now, if you're getting file names, you will not be able to fetch the fields automatically. So this time you have to manually enter the fields that you are going to fetch. I'll not write the names of all the fields. I'll just mention two of them. So customer ID. And customer name. Both of these are string type. And the length of customer ID is 10 and name is 50. You will also not be able to preview the rows. So you just have to click on OK. Now to view this, you have to either run the transformation or preview it using this preview option. Now if we do a quick launch, you can see that when we do a preview like this, all of these steps in the transformation are run. And this is the output. We are able to read all the customer IDs and names from those files. So the pros of using this format is that for complicated file names, such as if the file name has today's date, you can use the scripting steps along with this step to create those complicated names. So this type of setup is more powerful in that sense. But it has restrictions that is you cannot preview the data and you have to set the field names manually, which is very tedious if you have a lot of fields. This other method is very easy. 
you only need to know the regular expression notation which you have to mention in this field and we'll be covering that separately in some other video so this was just for letting you know that this is also an option i'll be deleting this so till now we have manually entered data of two customers and we have read data of central region and the west region using the text file input step in the next video we'll import data from an excel file